With the coming of the 20th century, Evansville was expanding in all directions. Industry was growing, and public transportation, along with the growth of the automobile, spurred the development of subdivisions on the outskirts of town. Much of this growth was concentrated on the west side. The communities of Howell, located near the railroad yard, and Independence, located along Franklin Street, slowly merged as neighborhoods evolved on the hills between the developments. Along with the growth of the community came a growth in interest for an opportunity for higher education. Prior to 1918, all students seeking a high school education were forced to travel to downtown Evansville. In reaction to this problem, many West Side mothers began requesting a new, more accessible school be built on their side of town. Grace Werner spearheaded this effort. The women based their call for a new secondary school on the statistic that almost one half of graduating students that attended the West Side Centennial Elementary School did not continue their education. They felt that if a closer alternative was offered, West Side students would be more inclined to continue their schooling past the sixth grade. The concerns of the Centennial School Mothers Club were relieved on November 27, 1916, when the school board unanimously passed a resolution to purchase 10 acres of land on Forest Hills for the new site of the West Side Junior High School. However, a debate over the site raged for weeks between the West Side patrons who argued that the area surrounding Forest Hills was not easily accessible to students and parents. An alternative, Lower Hill, was presented to the school board, but eventually the issue was settled after satisfactory measures were taken to ensure that Forest Hills would be equipped with the necessary amount of roads and walkways. On February 19, 1917, School Board Superintendent L.P. Benazay was authorized to purchase the 10 acres of land for a total cost of $8,000. On November 3, 1917, they laid the cornerstone for Wrights High School, and at, the, at that time this area was was a woods. It was called Forest Hills and down towards the end of uh, Dryer they had started developing and, and building houses but actually this area where the where we overlook the city here was was undeveloped. It was it was a woods and people would have gotten off the the streetcar stop down on Barker Avenue at the Austin Avenue stop even though Austin Avenue wasn't really there yet and they would have walked up a path through the woods to to attend the ceremony uh, laying the cornerstone. Elementary students sang the hymn, America, to open the ceremony and pay their respects to the school they would soon attend. As the cornerstone was laid into place, a copper box was placed inside that held documents from the day, including newspaper clippings, a deed, the names of the architect and general contractor, and a picture of the mayor. Official construction of the new West Side Junior High School began in the winter of 1917, and continued through the spring and summer of 1918. The total cost of construction was roughly $165,000, with an additional $35,000 needed for the plumbing, lighting, and heating of the school. During the construction, it was decided that the school would be named after Mr. Francis Joseph Wrights, a leading banker in the Evansville community who sold bonds to finance the new school. Although Mr. Wrights had no children of his own, he was especially interested in the education of young people and became instrumental in the process of making the West Side Junior High School a reality. The nearly finished school opened in September for the beginning of the fall semester. The 287 students who would be the first to walk the halls of F.J. Wright's school walked on planks to get up to the new building. The sidewalks had yet to be poured and the grounds around the structure were muddy but this did not thwart the students' excitement of a new school and a new school year. Along with the students, a new faculty was coming to school for the first time. At its head was Mr. Everett E. Morley, writes his first principal. As more students began to graduate from the area elementary schools and enter Wrights, it became necessary for the school to annually increase the grade levels it served. By 1921, F.J. Wrights had expanded from junior high to a high school that taught grades 7 through 12. In the spring of 1921, the senior class, nicknamed the 21 of 21, became the first students to graduate from the West Side School and fulfilled the dreams of the Centennial Mothers Club. However, this class was only the first of many to walk through the halls of Francis Joseph Wright's High School. Also in 1921, 
Excavators realized that a retaining wall was needed on the east side of the school to support the massive weight the school put on the hill. Before the school was built, Forest Hill had been home to one of many mining operations in the community. After the school was built, it became apparent that the mining shafts had dangerously weakened the foundation of the hill. Born out of this necessity was the Wrights Bowl, a beloved football stadium that is home to high school football games to this day. The first renovations to Wrights High came in 1926. Among the proposed additions to the school was the need for a new gym. For the first decade, the gym had been located in the auditorium as removable folding chairs were placed on the floor for performances and removed for athletic events. After seeing Central High School open up a widely popular new gymnasium, school officials at Wrights decided it was necessary to build a separate facility to host athletic events as well as regular gym classes. The renovations also included additional classrooms that were added to the original building to accommodate the growing number of students attending the school. Initially when the school was built it was pretty small and the gymnasium and the auditorium were in the same space. The auditorium that we have today uh, originally housed not only an auditorium but the gym and they would take the, the seats out and the folding chairs out and they would play basketball in there. And in the 1920s, in 1925-26, they started talking about adding on to the school. Because of a growing student population, there was a need for more classrooms, and as well as a need for a cafeteria and, and a real gymnasium with, with some spectator seating. As Evansville continued to grow, more and more students attended Wrights for their secondary education. Unfortunately, the building could not properly accommodate the rising student population in the city at its current capacity, and additions were required. A new three-story annex to the original building was constructed that would hold mathematics, language arts, and science classes. Also, a new 3,000-seat sports arena that extended from the front of the original school began construction. It would open in February 1958 and become the new home for girls' and boys' basketball games, replacing the old gymnasium that was built 30 years ago. These additions completely changed the landscape of the school and Wrights became a dominating presence overlooking the west side. My bond with Wrights started whenever I was five years old. Uh, my next to the oldest brother uh, played for the varsity team here at Wrights, and at that time they gave you five tickets for every varsity player. I'm the youngest of seven, so we did not do a whole lot, and so those five tickets were very precious. And we would rotate who was allowed to go to the games, and as a young child, that was huge. I'd walk into this gym filled with people. Uh, at that time, uh, Coach Barnett was the head coach, and the gym was full, uh, the refreshments were there, uh, cheerleaders, band. For a five-year-old, it was just amazing. So I thought this was a place of energy, a fun place to be, and I always associated rights with that camaraderie and, and victory celebration. The latest renovations to the school itself came in the early 1990s. The four-phase process of renovations took place over four years and changed nearly every aspect of Wrights High School. Phase one called for a new main parking lot for faculty and students, as well as new landscaping around the school. The biggest addition came in phase two, when a $5.6 million building was constructed on the south end of the school. This two-story edifice became home to the new cafeteria, band and choir rehearsal and performance rooms, as well as multiple social studies and computer rooms. The new building was connected to the original building by a glass enclosed link, which has since become one of the most recognizable features of the school. Phase three focused on the school's auditorium. Located on the second floor above the tunnel on the east side of the school, the ceiling and stage were raised and 50 square feet were added to the room to accommodate a new sound system and various storage facilities. New seats, paint, and carpet were also added as the auditorium came to resemble the structure it is today. The final phase included an overhaul of the existing classrooms and hallways. The renovations included everything from new carpeting and air conditioning to new bathroom facilities and furniture. Uh, I've gone through three renovations here in the media center, so I've had to box and pack and move this whole room three times. That was a tremendously exciting opportunity, uh, very tiring, but very, very rewarding. Um, 
I've seen the media center grow from a time of, of an old card catalog, manual typewriters, to an era of computers, internet, uh, and just uh, massive amounts of technology here in the building. And I feel just that I have been able to be a part of that because of my job here in the media center. Today, 90 years after students entered Wrights for the first time, the high school has become an icon on Evansville's west side. Many alumni and families of alumni remain connected years after their official involvement in the school has ended. I take a great sense of pride when people say, where do you work? And I said, well, I'm junior senior counselor at Wrights High School. And I cannot say that without smiling because I just, I enjoy it that much. Organizations like the Our Men's Club and Big Blue Boosters thrive, drawing support from hundreds of proud graduates. Now, third and fourth generation students are attending classes in the same building as their parents and grandparents once did. In an era where communities are breaking down and traditions are fading, a true sense of family and school pride remains at Wrights. What makes uh, Wrights special is just the feeling of community. Um, you, you can't walk into the school and uh, live on the west side and not feel like you're part of a, a greater community. And uh, that's, that's a pretty special feeling, to be able to go to school here and then come back and be a teacher. I mean, it's, it's just a really uh, a neat thing to be a part of. While seniors leave every spring, very often their feelings of attachment to F.J. Wrights never leave. <laughs>